back and welcome to the next episode of my JS Today series. Today we're going to have a look at the Tone Generator of JS plugin. So this one's got a few controls. So there's the wet mix which controls how loud the tone generated from the tone generator is going to be. And dry mix covers the level of whatever came in before the tone generator. So in other words, it's going to mix the tone generator signal with what came in on channels one and two. Then you've got the bass frequency. You've also got a note name, octave and fine tune controls. So you could set the frequency for the tone generator either by doing the bass frequency or the note and the octave and the fine tune. And you've got three choices for the shape of the generated tone, sine shaped wave, so triangle shaped wave and sort shaped wave. You'll notice I've also got the volume adjustment JS sitting after this, mainly to make sure that it doesn't go over zero dBs at any point because the tone generator doesn't seem to have any sort of clipping protection or anything built into it. So, if I enable it now, there's a tone that's quite loud as you can tell. So I've turned it down a fair bit. So, as I said, you can manipulate it by using the notes. You can go up or down octaves. And then there's fine tuning, of course, which if you want to really get specific with what you're tuning. And similarly, there's your base frequency there, so you can also manipulate it by doing that. So, oh, and I'll also do the different wave shapes just in case you haven't heard that before. Sine, triangle, and so. So, now we know what it does, what would we actually use this for? Well, I can think of a few things. One obvious one is if you're trying to work out what pitch something is, rather than having to um, sort of try and match it with a piano note or something or another and keep trying different ones to work, you could actually do it. You could actually do it using this, have the generator tone going, replay whatever you're trying to match over and over and adjust the frequency until you or the note or whatever until you get it to match. That's one possible thing that you could do. And obviously that's where your wet and dry sort of controls will come in very handy. You could also use it for checking your hearing in terms of how how high a frequency you can hear. I don't know, for me, it, my fre frequency range really only goes up to 12K. You could use it for getting an idea of the frequency response that you're actually hearing out of your, your monitors or your headphones. I mean, in theory, there's the specs, obviously, but it'll give you an idea as to, okay, really, I can not hear it once it gets to 40 hertz or whatever. And the other, the other thing that I think it's useful for is if you're, if you're testing some sort of effect or something that you're not 100% sure what it does or what it's doing, it's a very quick and easy way to have a very simple sort of tone that you're going to test that against. And you should very easily be able, be then able to identify what it's actually doing. And I guess the other thing you could do, say, particularly with the sine wave, is you could load up whatever effect you wanted to test after this um, and then look at it in an oscilloscope and that's going to give you some sort of an idea what the actual effect is doing to the wave. So I hope that hope that was useful for you. It, if ever you quickly want to generate a tone at a certain pitch, this is probably one of the best ways of doing it. 
I hope that that was useful for you and see you tomorrow in the next one.